Welcome to the Applied Ecology module. So in this module, we're looking at understanding a little bit about how biological systems work and how that understanding can help guide the design of uh, agricultural systems. Um, I, I kind of go into a little bit in detail in some of these points and you can refer to the ebook um, if I, if I, if I kind of lose you a little bit and, and you're wondering quite what I'm saying is about. You, you can refer back to you know the description of that in the ebook or, or replay the video. Um, this is my particular area of expertise. I'm an ecologist, so I might kind of go off on a few tangents that lose you a little bit. But um, I guess my emphasis with, with this module is um, really I feel to, to understand how we, we should design agricultural systems the best way, uh, we should really understand with understanding how the function of those e ecological systems work. So I think it's an important foundation for um, being good permaculture designers. So in this module, I'm gonna go through a few things here. I'm gonna go through a quick review of some of the keywords. There's gonna be some more in the ebook, so I won't go through them all, but um, just kind of touch on some of the, the concepts that we will review in this module. Um, then we'll there's some different clips on different things, so I'll go into um, how biological systems are organized, how within those biological systems, energy flows through those systems and matter is recycled. Um, how we can kind of um, understand the organization of Earth and all of its complexities by putting it into different spheres and in the study of e ecology, looking at the interaction between those spheres. And to help um, understand how biological systems work, to put them into food chains and food pyramids as a way of kind of mapping out that complexity of all the different um, feeding relationships in, in those systems. So just to start with, I'll touch on some of the key words here. So an ecosystem is a distinctive environment. So it could be a lake, a river, a pond. Um, but when we, when we generally use the term ecosystem, it's, it's quite a defined um, environment that we're looking at. And we're looking at within that environment, um, what are the different interactions of the biological systems? What is the habitat like? So the habitat is um, the abiotic factors, so the temperature, the humidity, the rainfall, the elevation, the distance from the ocean, um, the type of soil that's there. Um, all these factors will determine what um, well, they'll determine the adaptations the biological systems have had to survive well in that particular habitat, and they'll also influence the um, interactions within that biological systems. Obviously, a lake and the biological systems that occur in a lake is very different to those that occur in a forest. So they very much, you know, form, um, they, they provide the context to frame up those biological systems. Um, so bi biotic factors are the living things that are within that particular ecosystem, so all the plants, animals, insects, etc, etc. The niche, if you kind of hone into a particular animal within that um, ecosystem, the niche is the role it occupies within that ecosystem. So if you look at a predatory fish like a trout, for example, it's a top predator within a stream or a lake ecosystem, and its role is to um, eat the smaller organisms within it, a bit of population control, stabilizing the numbers of those organisms within its environment. Um, so its niche is kind of understanding the, um, what it eats, what eats it, and how it influences the other biological systems within its habitat. Um, so understanding the niches of some organisms is particularly important. If it's a keystone species, for example, it has a, a huge impact on all the other biological, um, all, all the rest of the biological species within our ecosystem. So we're a huge keystone species. We, we have a massive impact on all the other biological systems that share our habitats. But in nature, you know, there's things like beavers that make dams that create a habitat that affects everything else in that ecosystem. Um, ants can often be important keystone species in some um, drier ecosystems. Um, but normally every ecosystem has one individual in particular that stands out and has a big role in shaping all the other biological interactions. It could be a top predator, it could be a very important producer within our ecosystem, but we um, refer to it as being a keystone species. 
And then you've got uh, various ways of organizing um, the biological diversity. So a community is a group of one species. Um, so a community is um, all the different animals within a particular environment. Got that wrong, didn't I? Um, so a group of all animals. Um, and a population is the group of a particular species within that um, ecosystem. So a community is looking at the different groups of different species and the population is a single group of a single species. So it's just a way of framing up the uh, biological complexity within that ecosystem. So stay tuned, we'll, 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 we'll crack through it with these um, videos that I'm going to put on the website. And if you get a bit lost, refer that back to that ebook. Um, it will kind of provide a bit of a grounding foundation to overviewing these concepts. Um, flick any emails through to me and I'll do my best to answer them within the next Facebook Live tutorial session we have too. All right, enjoy.